Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting the offering and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Pinot Grigio. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint. The colors today are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, fire red and Mars black. And again, you can certainly switch up those colors if you like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil and I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round brush and a number one round brush. And through the painting process, I will refer to these as small, medium, and large. And of course you can switch those up. And if you're painting along with me, you're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the description, I'm gonna give you a couple of additional resources for you to help you through your painting process if you'd like. Um, one of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paint and there's even an easel in there for you. Um, and then I also have a link down there where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are gonna sketch an outline for our apple. We're gonna be using our number two pencil. And I'm just gonna give you a couple of markers to make and then we're gonna just connect those in, in the shape of, a, of an apple. And remember, there's no two apples exactly alike in this world. So if yours is a little bit different shape than mine, it's all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, at the bottom of my canvas, I'm gonna find about the halfway point and I'm gonna come up maybe about an inch and a half to two inches and make myself a little mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come straight up from that and I'm gonna come up a little bit more than halfway from my canvas. So I would say if this is about halfway, you wanna come up maybe about another inch, inch and a half or two and make yourself a mark. And then I'm gonna come over to the right hand side of my canvas. I'm gonna come up about halfway and I'm gonna come in maybe about, I don't know, four or five inches, make myself a mark. And then I'm just gonna come over on the other side, again, about halfway up and come in maybe same amount, maybe a little bit more. So I just have four kind of almost, they're not totally random, but four markers that are gonna just guide me to the, to the shape of my apple. So I'm gonna to refer to this as my little dip in the top of my apple. I'm gonna come up a little bit over to here and then just round that bottom and then I'll have another kind of a bump at the top like the two tops of the apple. So here we go. I'm going to kind of just go up a little bit and then I'm going to sketch around here. And remember, um, it, you want it to be round. Sometimes when we have markers, we tend to do straighter lines or points. So just, you know, keep in mind that this is a kind of a rounder object. So just kind of keep, keep it round as you're doing it. And then I'm going to come up this side. And you can see I'm just kind of sketching, just kind of sketching as I go. And then that is all I'm going to do for this first step. So we are going to use the pencil for the next step so you can just, you know, take a break and get ready for it. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are outlining our hand. I'm going to be using my number two pencil. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to give you a couple of markers. We'll make lines and hopefully by the time we're done we'll have something that resembles a creepy hand. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first, I'm gonna put my, my thumb into place. So I'm gonna come up the left-hand side of my apple, maybe about, I don't know, a little bit less than half the way up. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a curved line in through there. And then I'm gonna come down toward, if you come straight down the center of your apple and maybe come to the left about an inch or so, that's where this thumb is gonna meet like the rest. And I wanna put in a couple of bumps that are gonna um, kind of 
give the impression that there's some knuckles there. So I'm going to go maybe dip it in a little bit. Here's one knuckle. I'm going to come down. Here's another knuckle. And then I'll just kind of bring it right in towards the wrist. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the pinky, which is going to be over on the right hand side. And this one I'm going to have a little bit higher than my thumb. So I'm going to come about halfway up my apple and I'm going to do the same thing. Just make myself a little bit of a curve line. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to come over from the center, maybe a little bit farther, maybe about two inches from the center of my apple, make myself a mark. I like to have a starting point and a stopping point so I kind of keep my eye on the prize and know where I'm going. So that's why I like to make markers. Um, so again, I'm gonna make myself a couple of knuckles. So I've got maybe one here and then maybe one that's gonna be down in through this vicinity and then just kind of bring it back in like that. So now what I'm gonna do is I've gotta make three center fingers or three middle fingers. So what I'm gonna do is kind of in the center of my um, apple, I'm gonna just give myself a, a line going down. So I'm gonna uh, come down from the tip maybe about an inch, and then I'm just gonna make myself one line going down like that. And then somewhere between here and here, I'm gonna start another one another line and this one's going to be a curve and it's going to come somewhere between this and this. So something like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So somewhere between here and here, maybe right around here, I'm going to start here and give myself another kind of curve that's going to be between here and here. So something like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make little curves for the top. These are just um, giving you kind of the center of the finger that just gives them in a good place. So what I'm going to do is I'll give them all of them a little curve to the top. And now I'm going to give them each two sets of knuckles. So you have this knuckle here and this knuckle here. And then, well, I guess kind of three. You have one, two, and then three. The third one is going to be down below the apple. So you won't really see that one. So for now. So we're just going to do maybe a bump here and then a bump about midway down the finger. So here we go. I'm doing the center one first, obviously. You can see that. So I'm going to do maybe a bump in through here and then a bump about halfway down. And then I'm just going to bring it down in through this vicinity. So I want to stay a little bit to the right and to the left of my um, of my line and your fingers can be super skinny they can be super wide whatever you want it's all gonna work out it's just a big creepy hand and then when I go to do these two I want them to kind of connect to this so I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little um, almost like a V in through here something like that so I'm gonna do the same thing over here I've got a little bit of a kind of like the top of my hand, a little knuckle, and then a little knuckle there, and then just kind of bring it here. A little knuckle, little knuckle, and then bring it somewhere in this vicinity. And you can see I'm kind of keeping this one curved. So I've got that top part, that little middle knuckle, and then bring it down in through here. And then this one, same thing. We've got this little middle knuckle, and then this one's gonna be a little weird because it's part of the thumb, or part, it kind of connects to the thumb. So this is actually gonna be, it's it's outside and through there. And that, oh, we gotta kind of just give this little pinky its own little identity here too, but that's kind of the side of the apple. And that's all we're gonna do for that step. We are going to be switching brushes to our large brush for the next step, so you can just get ready for that. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the background black. So everything except for the apple and the hand can be painted black. I'm gonna be using my large brush and it does not matter what type of paint stroke you paint this on with. Whatever works for you is totally fine. We're just going for a nice kind of even coat throughout that area. So you can load it on and just, you know, kind of get it to be nice and spread out, nice and thin. And if you miss any spots, don't worry about it because we're gonna have a couple of steps where we'll be able to um, cover any little spots that might have been missed. Or sometimes our brushes will leave little scratch marks or brush marks that we don't like. Um, and 
I'm going to tell you not to worry about that because we're going to have, like I said, another step all on top of this black that will help to hide any of any any unfinished areas or any areas that might have um, marks that you don't want. And I'm coming right up next to my pencil outline. You can even, you know, pen you get it all the way and cover that pencil if you want to. And if you still see some pencil, don't worry because again, we'll be covering it with a future step. And I'm just getting this all nice and dark so it has a nice background for our spooky person that we are creating for this seasonal painting. I, I like doing these because this is one of my favorite seasons. Nice autumn with these you know, Halloween or spooky characters that we get to kind of incorporate into our decorations and our artwork. So this is going to be really fun. So I am just kind of finishing up here and then we're actually going to be switching brushes for the next step. So once you've got this nice and painted, of course, I slow down as I'm going around these more informative areas. And if you're anything kind of changes, morphs into a little bit different of a shape during this kind of process or this type of step, don't worry about it because it's just an apple. It's just a creepy hand. So you don't have to be perfect at all. You can even see my, my brush stroke is, isn't even a uniform brush stroke. I'm just looking to get this black paint on here. And then we are gonna switch brushes to that medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and painted in, you can put this large brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the first layer of our apple. We're gonna be using our medium brush and we're using a red and brown paint. So I'm gonna use them both at the same time on my brush. Um, I want to have some unevenness to the paint color. So you can, you know, use circles, you can use stripes. It's okay if it becomes streaky um, or uneven. That's what we want. This is our base coat for the apple and I want it to have an kind of an unevenness um, because apples to me don't have a solid color throughout them. I, they, they have like little speckles and all kinds of different markings on them. So I'm using this base coat to kind of provide me with a little bit of a natural um, kind of texture to, to the apple. Um, so again, you could really have fun with it um, with just doing flat red, but I want to give it a little bit more texture, so I'm using that red and the brown. And again, this is just going to be my base coat. Um, we're going to have a bunch of stuff that we do to the apple later, so don't worry if you, you know, don't make it perfect because you don't need to make it perfect at this point. And again, I'm just bringing it up to the outline of my um, fingers. I'm going to bring it all the way to the edge, meeting that black. And if some of your black is still wet and you bump into it, just paint it in. We're going to be putting a, a shadow around the edge of the apple anyways later. So if you end up with a little bit dark edge around there right now, it's all right. So this is, you know, I go a little bit slower just so I can make sure I keep the, um, the outline or the shape of my fingers. And then I'm going to just go all the way to the edge, making sure I touch that black. And if some areas are lighter or darker than others, that's my intent. So just know that if yours are lighter and darker in areas, then you have accomplished exactly what I set out to do. And then I'm just going to kind of keep going until I've got the entire apple colored in. So I am almost done here. And then we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So I'm almost there. Almost. I just got to get these little around these little fingers here. And then I am going to wash and dry this same brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of the hand. So I'm gonna be using that medium brush and I'm gonna be using brown and rust. And I'm gonna do a similar thought process as I did with the apple, which is, it's okay if some areas are lighter or darker than the other. And the type of paint that I am using is very see-through. Yours may be too, or yours might have a more solid um, look or feel to it. Whatever it is, it is. If you if you have, um, I, I tell you mine is thinner because you're probably gonna still see my pencil marks. And if you can still see your pencil marks, that's okay. So again, we've got lots, of, lots more stuff we're gonna be doing on this skin. So don't worry if it's not um, fully covered. I'm actually not using a ton of paint. I'm just kind of getting what I refer to as a base coat or a primer coat. On the um, on the area this is going to provide me with a great base for adding all of the other textural information that I want to add on these on these fingers and if you want to reshape them now's the time to do it they will take on a much different look as we start adding all the the wrinkles and the long nails and you know all the other elements that we're going to be adding to it and you can picture this to be a witch's hand or a monster's hand or a goblin's hand or whatever you want it can represent an imaginary monster kind of thing or it can represent the wicked witch of the west or whatever um you know Halloweeny kind of autumn scary movie kind of creature you want is totally fine. All I know is I don't want to come across this this person offering me an apple anytime in the near future, but it makes for great nightmares when you paint stuff like this. But I am just kind of getting the rest of these fingers in and you can see it's just a really kind of dark neutral color that's going to work really well when I go to put um, the other colors on it later. It's going to help assist me in my um, kind of needs of putting the details on there. So I'm almost done here. I have my little thumb to go. And again, maybe some areas are more rust colors, maybe some are more brown. And that's the beauty of using two colors at once. You, you get a kind of a multitude of, of tones and shades that really work well, especially when you're doing skin, because skin has thousands of layers to it. So any additional you know layers and colors that we can add to it are only going to enhance the realistic nature of it and then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step so once you've got that first layer of this creepy skin in you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our face that's in the shadow. <laughs> so I'm using my medium brush and the colors that I'm using are brown, yellow, rust, and black. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to be using hardly any paint. And I do want to forewarn you that before we start this step that you do want to have your canvas dry. So you could either, you know, just kind of take an extra break, or you could sit here and blow on it, or you could just take a blow dryer and blow dry it if your background is still wet. If it's not, then you're good to go. Um, and again, we're gonna be doing a really um, minimal amount of paint for this. We want this to just look as if it's just, this face is just hiding in the shadow of the hair or the cloak or whatever we're, the, thing that we're gonna put on top later, um, and it's behind the apple. So when you're doing this, the paint is gonna look brighter when it's wet. Because it's on a black background, as it dries, it will get darker. So don't um, fear the brightness of it when you first put it on. Just If it's a little bit too bright, just wait a minute and let it kind of dry. And then if it's still too bright, then you can just add a little bit of brown or black to it and dull it down. But um, we really want this to just kind of be set back in, you know, an almost 
hardly there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a tiny bit of brown and yellow on my brush. And because we are using black and yellow, what's gonna happen is that you're also gonna see, and the brown, you're gonna see a little tinge of green, which was my intent because I wanted it to kind of be spooky kind of, and I associate green scary green with scary things i don't know why i just do so um maybe i don't know maybe all the monsters from my childhood had green in them or something so when you see a little green don't be alarmed i planned it that way so i need the impression or the illusion of a nose um because this is in the shadows you probably are not going to really see the actual eyes but you're going to see a dark like eye socket so you might see little cheeks the cheeks are going to be the brightest the nose is going to be the brightest and maybe a little bit on the forehead i'm going to have my face not as wide as my apple because i want it to look far out in the distance so what i'm going to do is i'm going to with my yellow and brown i'm going to kind of put in the shape what where I want these um, the facial features to be so here I go I'm going to kind of put my nose or the impression of my nose and you can always just kind of you don't need to use your finger but you can fade it into the black and again you'll see as it dries it's gonna be more faint as it as it goes I've got a couple of cheeks that I want to put in here maybe one there maybe one in through here and I don't want my face to be wider than my than my apple so at some point I got to kind of put the sides of my face on just to kind of keep myself um, knowing where I want to go so I can connect that to my to my cheek maybe bring this up a little bit maybe do the same thing on this side and each side can be a little bit different from one another it doesn't have to be exactly the same from one side to the next I need to go up and give myself a little bit of a forehead somewhere in through here. So I want it to kind of look a little wrinkly. So I'm going to add or I'm going to leave some spots of the black. And I'm also going to I know I'm going to have this like wavy cloaky thing on the top, too. So I'm not um, I don't need to go all the way to the top. I'm just kind of giving myself a little stuff in through here maybe this nose the bridge of the nose is a little bit wider maybe i've got a couple of eyebrow bones something in through this region and once you feel like you've got kind of a a good shape to it then you can start adding a little bit of the rust color if you want to and again this is just meant to really just be very subtle. Um, the rust is going to complement the hand down below, but you don't really need to put a ton. This is just, you know, something that's going to, again, speak to authenticity of, you know, it being skin. You could even, if you feel like you might see a little bit of a of a eyelid, you could put a little bit in through there. But I'm hardly putting any. And you can always make it brighter by just adding a little bit more yellow onto your um, onto your brush. I'm going to add a touch more rust maybe on this cheek. And again, I'm just going slow and steady. I don't want to overwhelm myself with with these bright bright colors. I just want them to kind of fade into that black. And I said that you could use black in this step in case you need to. So if I did something that I was like oh no, there's a big huge spot on my forehead and I don't like it, I can just pick up a little bit of black and just kind of work it in there. And then that's going to help me to just, you know, eliminate any really bright spots that I accidentally created. And you can always add more to this as it starts drying. You'll see um, that you might want to add more. Like I think I want more on the eyebrow or like maybe where there's almost like an eyebrow bone or something up and through here so really i just want you know dark eye sockets something from my forehead um something from my nose i think i want my nose to be a little bit brighter so it looks like it's protruding a little bit more so any areas that you want to protrude you're going to want them just a little bit lighter and i'm just kind of building it i want this little cheeks to be represented and once you feel like you've got it 
then just stop painting. You can certainly keep tweaking it and keep waiting for it to dry and just keep tweaking it until it is everything that you would had hoped it would be step away from it. Um, but just kind of keep tweaking until you feel it's done. And then we are gonna switch brushes to our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your creepy in the shadow face, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the cloak or the hair or the hood or whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna be the thing that is draped around this very scary creature person that we're making. <laughs> so the, I'm using my large brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are yellow, brown, black, and white. Um, and I want mine to really kind of encapsulate and look wavy and make you feel like if the this person just went like this, whoosh, they disappear behind it. So it could be their hair, it could be their cloak. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with brown and yellow on my brush and I'm gonna kind of get these waves in motion um, and then I'll start adding black and maybe a little bit of white as a final highlight too. So I'm putting brown and yellow on my brush and I want it to kind of look wavy. So what I'm gonna do is I want it to kind of drape over part of this eye and through or part of the head over here. So I'm gonna start a little bit to the right of my center and I'm just gonna kind of make myself this wavy motion that kind of goes over here and down here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of in, start enhancing it just to make sure I know that that's where it's gonna be. <laughs> maybe do a couple of swipes over here and then maybe I'll just bring it down and through here with this little wave coming out of the darkness. Then I'm gonna kind of shift over to here because I'm I don't want to start put, picking up black and white yet before I put the whole um, thing in motion. So I'm still just picking up yellow and brown. And on the left hand side, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I don't want it to look exactly like that. So I'm gonna start a little bit to the left of the head. And this one, I'm just gonna kind of have a, maybe a more gentle kind of wave coming down in through here. And then maybe I'll do the same thing, how I kind of highlighted those little wavy parts. I can do the same thing with this, with just the leftover paint that's on my brush, kind of doing something like that. I don't want it to look like distinct lines. I really just want it to look like something is in motion or has the ability to have motion to it. Um, and then once I've got that in place, now I'm gonna start picking up some black with my yellow and brown to make sure that I've got everywhere on the interior. I want this to stay really, really dark on the inside. So I'm just gonna pick up some black, make sure that everything is painted right up to my, um, to my hand and to my apple, make sure that I've got that all on there. And then you can see if I've got remnants of that yellow and brown, they just kind of start to hide in the shadow of that interior of it. I want that to be the darkest area inside and then we'll lighten up the outside in a second here. So right now I'm just kind of still picking up a little bit of black. I have still maybe a little bit of remnants of the other colors on my brush, which is quite all right. I just wanna make sure I've got all of this interior really painted and it doesn't have any leftover areas that need to be painted because I'm not gonna touch this area again. So just going right up to my person, right up to my apple with my, with my black on my brush and any of the remnants from the yellow and the brown and just making sure I've got this. And then once I've got this interior painted and making sure that it is fully painted, um, I'm gonna start just going back towards the light. So I'm picking up more yellow and brown, making sure I've got enough of a highlight and movement in through here. And again, it just kind of fades off into the darkness. Maybe I've got a little bit more up here. And if you've got too much black on your brush and it's not 
kind of getting off, you can always just wipe it on your paper towel because I am gonna get a little bit lighter in a second and I'll start to add a little bit of white too. Um, and again, I know that this is gonna um, get darker as it dries, but right now I just am kind of getting this, this cool thing in motion, making sure I've got everywhere painted up there, making sure I've got everywhere in here painted that I want to, and I'm gonna start to um, add just maybe a little bit of brown and white. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna pull this in just a little bit more. Get this to be a little bit closer to her. Oh, I just called it a her. I wasn't sure what the gender was, but I guess I guess that that tells me that it's it's a her. Yours might not learn, turn out to be a she, but I guess I guess that's what mine's gonna be. And then once I've got this all in the the motion that I want, I'm gonna start picking up a little bit of brown and white um, to add just a tiny bit of a highlight, maybe in this vicinity maybe coming over in through here. And just so it adds more dimensional, a, a deeper kind of dimensional element to it, so it's not too flat or doesn't get hidden too much in, in the darkness. I want you to be able to kind of see it a little bit, maybe a little bit kind of coming over in through here. And then, um, you again, you can kind of keep tweaking this as much as you want to. You can have it really light or really dark, whatever, again, is kind of visually appealing to you. And then uh, we are gonna switch back to our medium brush. So once you've got this step all nice and done, you can put away your large brush, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the second layer to our apple. I'm gonna be using black, brown, and red. And how I'm gonna be doing this is I'm gonna be doing my shadowy areas with the black and the brown, and then I blend it in with the red to the rest of the areas. So my shadow areas are gonna be the little dip up at the top. It's gonna be along the edges and then down by um, the bottom of the apple, down by um, where the fingers are. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with some black and brown on my brush at the same time. And I can put my little dip in through here. And this can be you know, as big of a dip or as little of a dip as you would like. And then once I've got it in there, what you can do is you can just wipe your brush on your paper towel while the paint is still wet on your canvas, pick up a little bit of red, and then you can get that edge of the shadowy area to blend right into the rest of the apple. And we're gonna eventually be painting the whole apple you know, once you get your shadowy areas, we'll paint the whole thing red, but um, this just helps you when you're in that shadowy area to um, get it to blend with the, the neighboring area of the apple. And then I'm gonna do it along the side here. So I've got brown and black on my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of come right down this side. And while it's still wet, I'm gonna pick up some red and just get it to kind of blend right in along that edge. And I know that I'm gonna need some down here, so I'm just kind of getting that little dark area down here. And this is one of those steps that you might find yourself going back to an area that you've already done just to get it to blend in a little bit more, but you can certainly you know, take as much time as you'd like. The whole goal is to just get the shadowy areas around the edges, um, down at the bottom of the apple and um, in that little dippy part and then you just paint the rest of the apple red. So you might find that you you know feel comfortable working on one side and then moving moving your way to the right or you know working down at the bottom and moving your way up. Whatever is comfortable for you, you can go at whatever pace that you want. But you can see as I'm doing this, I've still got those little kind of speckly light spots and dark spots from that first layer, which just makes it look more realistic to me because there's all kinds of apples with little speckles and stuff all over them. Um, the one thing I do want to caution you is when you're doing these fingers down here, you do want that shadowy area to kind of follow um, the plane of the apple, not the fingers. So you can, 
you could even kind of just skip along something like this and give yourself a little bit of a guide um, so that way you make sure that you're not kind of doing like little U dips between um, the fingers at the top of that shadowy area. And that just gives you a little bit of a guide so again, it doesn't look like it's the shadows from the fingers, you want it to be the shadow of the bottom of the apple. And then I'm just kind of putting a little bit of black and brown on my brush just to get it even darker down here in this little crevice of the fingers because I know it's going to be super dark down there and then I'll just kind of get it to blend up as I go up that apple and then um, I'm going to start to put more red on my brush just to get these to blend in a little bit more and if it's um, liney for you if you if you're not able to get the sections to blend just let it dry for a minute and then you can go back and do another layer on top of it. Um, so sometimes it does end up a little bit liney, but if you don't use a lot of paint, it will dry nice and fast. And I'll probably hit that again before I'm done with this step. Um, but between these fingers, I'm just really picking up some of my red to do the second coat in through here. I've got that area over on the right that I'll put another um, shadow on the right side of the apple as well. And then like I said, I'll probably hit um, this bottom section one more time before I'm done with this step just so I can uh, make sure that I get rid of that line that you see. Um, and then I just again am using kind of thin paint so that way I can work my way around it and give myself a nice coat and I'm imagining this is my favorite kind of apple, which is a nice crispy autumn apple that I get in my local orchard. I don't know if you like the ones with the thick skin or the thin skin. I like mine with thin skin. It's a nice, sweet, crispy apple. So that's totally what I'm imagining this to be. I'm putting my shadow over here on the edge and I don't want to lose it in the black. So you do want to make sure it's a little bit lighter or you've got, um, you know, some kind of red or something along the edge to um, separate it from the blackness that's in there so you can see it all the while and I'm just finishing up over here and then I will just use a probably one little more layer down at the bottom with my black and brown and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows all nice and fully rendered down at the bottom of your apple, you can put this medium brush, or actually wash and dry this medium brush, and we will use it for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the second layer on the hand. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and rust. And I'm gonna do something similar to what I did on the apple, which is putting in the shadowy, darkest areas and then just filling in the rest with that rust color. So the, um, the shadowy areas are gonna be black and brown. So I'm gonna put black and brown on my brush at the same time. And black can very easily take over. So if you're going and, and the black is just overpowering, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel or pick up some of the rust or um, back it off just a little bit, but it can certainly overpower. So I'm gonna have shadow down at the bottom of the hand where the wrist is coming up. I'm gonna have a lot of shadow on this thumb and then I'll have some shadow kind of between the fingers and then the lighter areas are gonna come on top. So I have black and brown on my brush right now. So I'm just kind of getting some shadowy area down at the bottom. Now I'm gonna pick up some rust without washing my brush and just get it to kind of blend in with that shadowy area. And then I'm gonna move over to this really dark area by the thumb. So I'm putting little black and brown on my brush. And this is gonna be the um, probably the darkest part of, of the hand where it's getting shadowed by um, the rest of this part of the hand <laughs> and by the apple. So you can make this thumb pretty darn dark. It's gonna, you know, we might add a little bit more shadow later if we need to, but this is a 
pretty dark area of the hand. Then I'm gonna just pick up a little bit of rust to finish off that thumb and just getting it to blend in to um, the shadowy area. I'm picking up more black and brown and I don't wash my brush, I just kind of, um, if I need to, I'll wipe it on my paper towel, but right now I'm, I'm just kind of going with whatever happens. And the shadow's gonna, you know, be a little bit between the knuckles. So if you just kind of think of your own hand where the little dips and stuff would be, that's where we're gonna put the shadow. So hands are not necessarily scary, like um, some artists may think that they are. I think you just gotta kind of use your common sense and look at your own hand and say, hmm, where do my knuckles sit? Or where, you know, where would I think that there's some dips and stuff? And again, this is meant to be not a photorealistic hand. This is just meant to be a fun, creepy, you know, scary hand. So it doesn't have to be anatomically correct. I just picked up some more rust and I'm gonna just kind of get the rest of this bottom part of the hand painted with this second coat on here. And then as I move up the fingers, um, I might put a little bit of brown or a little bit of a darker color on the edges of them, but I'm really at this point now that I've got the dark at the bottom and between the fingers, really just, um, concentrating more on just getting a second coat on the top part of the fingers. So don't worry if it's light or dark or, you know, has perfect form to it. It's, it's all right. Um, I'm just going to kind of get that there. Maybe put a touch of brown on my brush, maybe brown and black. Maybe I'll get a little bit uh, on the edges here just to give it a little bit more shadow on those, on those sides. Pick up some more rust here just to get it to blend in a little bit. And again, just have fun with this. This is meant to be a really um, exciting and, and fun painting. So no need to sweat over the little details because it's just a fun, creepy painting. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be, you know, think of this as that hand as you were, you know, a child. Maybe this hand is like coming out from underneath your bed or something. Now that'll give you nightmares. <laughs> Sorry if I just gave you a little, little scary stuff to think about later. <laughs> um, but it's fun when I do these type of paintings. Just letting your imagination run wild is the best thing to do because then you can just have fun with the whole process and not put any pressure on yourself to make, you know, it perfect because it doesn't have to be perfect. This is all just about, you know, tapping into our inner Halloween or, you know, spooky movie kind of part of our being. And then we are going to be switching brushes to the small brush for the next step. So once you've got this layer of your hands on here, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our fingernails. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using brown and white paint. And they're gonna look a little drab after this with the color that we're using. Um, but this is, just, this is just the base coat. We'll make them look fancier afterwards. We just kinda wanna give them shape and give a base coat to them. So I'm gonna be using brown and white on my small brush at all times. Um, so some of the nails will be lighter than others, some will be darker. And I'm gonna just think of it how I would uh, picture a scary um, person's fingernails to be, and they'd be long and curly and pointy and unattended to. Um, and, and I'm gonna look at my own hand to see what direction I would put the nail in. So my nail is gonna be a little bit lower and I'm gonna see part of my skin on this thumb. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, okay, this is the side of this one. So I'm gonna put it like that and I want it to come up and maybe curl at the end and then I have it bump out just a little bit past the skin. And then I just color it in. So this is um, the side view. And then when we go to do the front view, that'll be a little bit different. And again, it's not gonna look totally awesome after this step, but trust me when I say it, it'll look awesome after we put the, um, the little highlights and the shadows on later. So that's gonna be that one. And then these 
three will be similar to each other, but this one over here will be kind of similar to this one. So I'll go do this one since I was ready. And um, this one's gonna be my pinky one, so it might be a little bit smaller than the, um, than the thumb one. So again, it's gonna be kind of curved at the end. It's gonna be about halfway in the skin, and then I'll give it a little nail bed in through there, and then it comes out a little bit further than the, the skin itself on the outside edge. And you could have your nails longer or shorter or more curved or pointier, whatever you want is totally fine by me. This center one, I do want it to kind of look a little curved um, and not so straight towards um, her face. So I'm gonna do it maybe about a half of an inch to an inch above the actual skin itself and then come into the nail bed curve like that and then maybe curve it just a, a little bit over on that right hand side and again you can have yours as long or as pointy as you want totally up to you maybe yours are shorter than mine it's totally up to you maybe one side is, you can see the skin more on one side of the nail than the other. And again, it's okay if it's a little streaky right now. We will um, work that out when we add the highlights and the shadows. This one's definitely gonna be curved because this one's on this side anyways. So I'm gonna do something like this and something like this. And again, the curvier and more gnarly they <laughs> look, the better. The more they're gonna look scary and unkept and like they're gonna scratch something that they're not supposed to be scratching. Mm, lots of pictures just popped into my head when I said that. <laughs> All right, and then I've just got two, two more to go. Maybe this one's gonna be curved in that direction. So again, I'm just reloading my brush with some brown and white. I'm gonna get this to curve over in this direction. And then we are going to be switching brushes to the medium brush. So once you've got all of your long, pointy, curvy nails into place, you can put this small brush away in your water cup, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding the highlight to our apple. So this apple is rounded and I'm going to say that the light source is coming maybe somewhere over, not totally on the right, but somewhere over here. So I'm going to have my lightest part in through here. I'm going to be using my medium brush and the colors I'm using are mostly red, but I'm also going to use yellow and white. Um, and the reason why I'm going to be using yellow is because I'm going to be attempting to do a highlight on a red apple with red and white paint, which is going to naturally go pink on me, and the yellow will help to counteract that so it doesn't turn out too pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, oh, and another tip, less is more. The less paint you use, the more control you'll have. So as you're going through this process, you don't need to use a lot of paint. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white on my brush, and I know I want my highlighted area to be in through here. And you don't want it to look like you're painting around your fingers, so you definitely want to bring that highlighted area, you know, if it's behind uh, one of the fingers, just make sure that you bring it over onto the other side like it's naturally gonna happen. We will um, be doing more to the fingers, so don't worry if they're not, um, perfect at this point. And then I just kind of fade this area, my highlight area out, so it almost fades into the apple and fades um, into like the darker part. So that way it's the brightest in through here. I do want it to come over here. And the brightest part is gonna be where that apple is kind of puffing out the most or the closest to the viewer. So I've got this going on here. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red and yellow. So again, not much, just a teeny tiny bit on my brush. I'm gonna start below my highlighted part and I'm gonna just kind of work my way into it. And what I'm really doing here is I just want it to get almost like a really nice natural blend into the apple itself. Um, you can have really distinct highlights, which is totally fine. That would definitely happen 
um, naturally in some aspects. If there was a really, really bright light, um, it could really cast almost like a individual white spot. And I'm going to highlight a little bit after an additional bright spot once I've got this uh, initial area highlighted. You can see as I'm adding this yellow and red on top of it, I've still got that bright spot underneath it. And if I wanted it even a little bit brighter, I could certainly add a tiny bit of white to my brush while I am kind of blending it in. And that will elevate that that light spot even more. And you can just fiddle with this, um, continuing to kind of uh, get that blend in there. Um, apples do have speckles on them too, some apples do. So if you want to take your brush and almost kind of dot it um, with maybe white, red, and maybe a little yellow if it's turning too pink on you, you can certainly do that. That's going to give you that textured kind of effect to it. So you play with it until, you know, it's really giving you um, the look that you, that, you've, that you desire. I am gonna put a little bit of a highlight on the top as well where um, this area hits. I don't want it to be necessarily as bright as the area that I'm doing right now. Um, but I do definitely want there to be a little bit, I've got light on my brush right now, so I'm just gonna kind of add it while I've got it on my brush. And the main goal here is just to get it to look natural. So I want there to be, you know, a curve to this apple. I want you to know that it's, you know, lighter at the top because there's some kind of light source that is illuminating it. So I just kind of keep playing with these um, lighter colors until I have exactly what I am looking for and sometimes you you know just got to step back for a minute make sure you've got the proper curve on it or step back from the painting a little bit so you can get a view um, from a distance I want this to be a little bit brighter so I'm gonna add a little bit more of a highlight coming over on this side so you can really understand that this is you know buckled out a little bit in through here and again I just kind of keep adding to my um, to the painting in these little layers just to make sure that I've got as much of a bright spot as I want and maybe I've got a little bit over here too and again the concentrated part of the highlight is going to be the top but the brightest is going to be over here and I definitely you know don't want to make this too bright so I you know can keep tweaking it all I want until I've got exactly what I want and then we are going to be switching brushes to our tiny brush so after you've got your beautiful highlight on the top of this apple. I just want to make sure I've got this in here bright enough too. Once you've got this highlight, you can wash and dry your little brush and you can get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're painting our apple stem. I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using black, brown, and white. You could use a little yellow if you wanted to, um, totally up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use black paint to start. And you could have this as big or as small as you want. I mean, some apple stems are really big but I'm gonna have it coming somewhere out here and it's gonna be kind of in front of my nose I'm gonna have it kind of curved some of them have a little button thing on the top of them but you know you can make it look whatever kind of apple that you like to eat and I'm gonna just kind of make sure that that kind of hides in that little dip I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on of my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and white and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a highlight on my on my apple stem so I'm gonna do a little bit on that tippy top I need a little more paint on my brush if you're gonna see it so a little kind of tippy top there and then maybe a little just a little dip of a highlight down there I'm gonna stick a little bit more brown on my brush just so it's not too white I don't want you to just be looking at the stem on my 
Yeah, that looks good. You want to be able to see it, but you don't want it to steal the, the focus of, of other areas. So once we've got that done, we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are doing the wrinkles and the highlights on our hands. So I'm going to be using my medium brush, and the colors that I'm using are rust, brown, yellow, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself kind of like a light skin color. So I'm going to just take a little brown, or excuse me, a little rust, a little brown, a touch of yellow, and a little white, and just mix myself a light kind of lighter skin color than what excuse me than what that is so you don't want it to i don't know to pink so that's where the yellow is going to come into play that will help you make it more of like a realistic kind of skin tone and throughout this process i'm going to be using this light skin color as well as some rust and some brown so that way I don't get carried away with too many light streaks. But I'm gonna use the light on my brush first to get these wrinkles into motion and, and highlights. And the wrinkles are gonna be near the fingernails at the top. So that'll be like your first knuckle. Then they're gonna be at your second knuckle. And then they're gonna be at these knuckles in through here. That's where the um, the knuckly highlight part is going to go and then I'll also kind of streak in in a um, up and down kind of motion the highlights on like the middle of the fingers and then over here I've got the knuckle is going to be here so I'll put a couple of wrinkles in through there you'll see how this goes so I've got a little bit of that light skin color on my brush as I'm doing this I'm just kind of dusting on with the point the end of my brush a couple of little strategic marks um, I don't push really hard. I'm just going for little wrinkles, I guess. So I've got a couple kind of in through here. I've got some going on in through this knuckle. I've got some, these knuckles are, you know, kind of far down here. The hand is, is moving or being rested in that direction. And I'm just going to keep systematically going through each finger, just light little marks where those knuckles are and that you don't want them straight across you almost kind of want them cylindrical kind of um, I've got a light area going on down here light area going down here again these are going to be the knuckles right in through here this is going to be this knuckle in through here this is going to be the little knuckle underneath the fingertip I'm going to reload my brush because I feel like I'm running out I got little wrinkles here I've got the side of the knuckle in through here. I've got, um, I have to, I have to look at my reference material. <laughs> I've got a little highlight over in through here and maybe, maybe a little bit over here too. And we got, can't forget about the thumb. So I've got a little in through here as well. And maybe a little underneath there. And then once I've got those little highlights on there, on the knuckles, now I'm going to take that same paint I don't need a lot I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm gonna put a little bit down the center part of the fingers again you don't need a lot I'm just kind of rubbing it on there it can almost like fade into the other um, color that's that it's sitting next to so this is just kind of like a little accent on um, on the finger to show you that it's kind of bumped out a little bit so very little paint on my brush just getting this little highlight accent I'm gonna reload my brush with a little bit more here and you can see as I'm doing this it's starting to give shape to those fingers which is what we're going for here so I've got a little bit there maybe a little bit more in through here and now that I've kind of got those highlights in, in where I want them. Now I've got to kind of blend it into the rest. Like I feel like this is still streaky down and through here. So this is where I'm going to be picking up some more of that rust um, and just kind of getting everything to blend in together, making sure it looks like it belongs. And if I need some more brown, I can pick up a little bit more brown. But all the while, I don't want to ruin or take away the effect of those lighter areas. And if I needed that 
um, those lighter areas to be a little bit lighter. I could even make that wrinkle color a little bit brighter. You could, you could mix it with a little bit more white to make it a little bit brighter, just whatever is visually appealing to you. I might actually make mine a little bit lighter before I'm done this process, but I definitely want to make sure first I'm getting the rest of the skin in through there, that there's not too many streaky areas that, um, that I'm not digging. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of those. And then I think I am, I'm going to just take my, um, light color and elevate it just a little bit more, make it just a tiny bit brighter so I can have just a couple more pops of brighter wrinkles in through here. And you can do the same if, as mine was drying, it got a little bit too dark for me. So that's where I wanted to, I came, I'm coming in with a little bit brighter of a color because I want to make sure that you can, that you can see it. There's no sense in putting it on there if you can't see it. So if you need to, you can certainly do the same. Um, I just want to make sure that I've got enough of these little highlights in through here. And then once I've got this step all nice and accomplished, I am going to be um, switching to my small brush for the next step, but I just want to make sure I've got these fingers as as fully realized as I want. We've got what we're going to be doing one more step on them in a little bit. Um, but I really want to get the majority of them nice and done, um, during this step. So just have fun with it. You can keep tweaking it, you know, as, as you go through the process, the more little details that you put in it, the, the more realistic and, and extra creepy it's going to look. And then again, we're going to switch brushes to the small brush. So what, yeah, once you get that highlight done, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are finishing our fingernails. So I'm gonna be using my small brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white to do this. So what I'm really gonna, in essence, be doing is doing a shadow and a highlight um, and any tweaking I wanna do in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some black and brown on my brush and on every fingernail where it meets the skin, I'm gonna put a shadow. So I've got black and brown on my brush right now. So I'm gonna put a little shadow there. I'm gonna put a little shadow there. And the trick to making this look a little bit more realistic is you don't need super clean lines. So they can very easily just um, almost blend into the actual nail itself. Um, so don't feel like you're shadowy line has to be really distinct. It can certainly be a little bit um, more blended into the, into the nail as opposed to just a distinct line. So I've got my little shadows in there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding highlights and the highlight is gonna be where the nail is curved out the most. So this would be in this, area, this would be kind of in this area, this would be kind of in this area. So almost in the center part of the nail is where you're going to find the biggest highlight. So I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up a little bit of white, and I'm going to take white and I'm going to add that highlight. And then before I go to the next one, I'm going to blend that highlight into the rest of the nail by just picking up some brown. And then that's going to get that whole nail to really have a ton of dimension to it. So I added the highlight and then picked up a little bit of brown. And if you need to at the nail bed, if it's not blending in as much as you want, just pick up a little bit more black and that can get it darker for you. If you know, I definitely want mine to have a lot of darkness down at the bottom. So if you want, if any nail is too bright for you, just make it a little bit darker, add, add back a little bit more of the um, black. So I'm going on to the next one, adding a little bit of white to my brush, putting this highlight down kind of that center area, picking up some brown to get it to blend in on the sides, 
And then if I need to do any more adjusting after that with more shadow at the bottom or even maybe I made my maybe I took away some of my highlight and I and it's not bright enough for me anymore. So I can just pick back up a little bit more white and just add a little bit back in. So whatever intensity you want it, that one looks good to me. So I'm gonna move on to this one. This one's got this little curve in the middle, and then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown just to get it to kind of blend in on those sides. And again, if you want it more intense or more, you know, I think I want mine a little darker at the bottom of this nail bed, maybe just give myself a little little more grit and a little bit more dirty dirt or whatever down at the bottom and just keep playing with them until they are, you know, as prominent as you want them to be. Just going to get this to blend in just a little bit, but I'm digging digging it now. Yeah. Gosh, that looks nasty <laughs> in a good painting way. <laughs> so, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of uh white to get this one on into here. I think I had some brown on my brush there. So pick up a little bit more white, get it nice and bright in through there, and then pick up some brown so I can get this to kind of blend in down at the bottom. I think I want a little black, a little bit more black down here at the bottom. I'm, I'm finding that I'm wanting these bottom parts a little bit darker than I had originally done them. So I'm just, you know, adjusting it as I go to whatever my visual preference is and just kind of working this in, making sure that it has as much of a gradient as I want it to and it feels as real and as creepy as I want it to. <laughs> yeah. And then I've got my last one over here. Going to put just a little tiny bit of white over here on the edge and then I'll add my brown to get it to blend in a little bit and then I think I'm going to add a little bit more of that darkness down by that nail bed. I think that that's adding a lot of a lot of dimension to it and then we are going to be switching to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your nasty gritty nails all nice and in place and they're gonna scratch something you can put the small brush away in your water cup take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are adding shadows underneath our fingers so right now the fingers kind of just look like they're stuck to the apple so i want to bring them out a little bit and make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. So in order to do that, these two look pretty three-dimensional because they've got a little bit of shadow along the apple, but these three in particular, I want those to kind of pop out a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black and red paint. Um, and a paper towel is always at my ready and water is always at my ready. So the reason why I say that is because I don't need a lot of paint um, and sometimes the paint, especially black, will get away from you. So if you ha have a mindset that I can fix it just to, provided I get to it kind of quickly, you can do that with a little bit of water. And you'll see what I mean because I'm sure I'm not going to be perfect the whole time. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm putting just a tiny, tiny bit of black on my brush, little, little tiny bit, and a tiny bit of red. And then to make sure I have a very little amount, I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel. I can always put more. It's really tough to take away once it's there. And then what I'm going to do is on every finger, I'm just going to kind of rub this black red mixture along the side and if it if I feel like it's getting too much I can just take my brush and dip it into my water wipe it on my paper towel and then now I'll be able to kind of rub it in so it's less um, bold and you can continue that process to almost make it smaller and smaller so Less is more, and the use of water helps out a lot. And then when you get around like the finger, the top of the fingertip, I'm just gonna kind of on this left-hand side, 
give it a little bit of a line, but on the right hand side, I'm gonna bump it out a little bit more so it almost looks like there's a, a shadow that's being cast, uh, like a, a more dimensional shadow, like that you're actually seeing the form of the finger as opposed to just the finger being um, darker on that side. And you could even do a little bit underneath the fingertips too. So just a teeny bit of black and red, and that's gonna give you just a little bit of an idea that something is casting a shadow. And you can see, I just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel, and you can add, while it's still wet, you can just kind of form it the way that you want it to be. And then if, you know, worst case scenario, just bring back some of the red, and that will help you to, um, kind of blend in anything that might be a little bit too bold, but this is gonna get those fingers to pop right out. I feel like I have I need my finger to be a little bit skinnier here, so you can also use it to thin out your, your fingers too. So I'm just gonna kind of go with this at this point, picking up a little bit of black and red, and I'm just gonna kind of keep going along each one of these fingers, making sure I've got a little bit of a shadow to make sure that they don't look too, um, I don't know, too two-dimensional, I guess. We did put a lot of um, information and shadows and you know all kinds of good stuff in there, but this is just gonna help elevate it that one last little, that one last little bit. So I'm gonna just put maybe, maybe a little shadow over here because I feel like the, the light I don't know. You, you can play with it with um, where you want those shadows to be. I'm just kind of, I guess the, the biggest place they would be is over here on the left, but I don't know. We've got, I guess we've got a little bit of light coming in, in a couple of different ways here. But as long as you got a little bit of a shadow on both sides to make sure that it's not too two-dimensional. You can see here just by adding a teeny tiny bit of that darkness is going to help to make it look, yeah, this is looking good. A little bit more here. And then we have one tiny little step to go after you've got your shadows underneath these fingers and it's going to be done with the small brush. So once you've got these all nice and done, just make sure you've got every finger kind of grounded to that apple. Um, I just need to do this side over here. Even the side that's on the light, it doesn't, you know, you don't need to do a big shadow, but you know, something that tells the viewer that that finger sits away from the apple a little bit or is a little bit higher, even if it just looks like a shadow on the side of the finger, that's, that's totally fine. We just want it to make sure it reads as three-dimensional if possible. Maybe a little more shadow in between these fingers. And then again, we're gonna switch, yeah, that looks great. We're gonna switch brushes to the tiny brush. So you can do that and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corners. I think I'm gonna do this one in the bottom left. I'm gonna do it with black paint on, on this cloaky, hairy thing. <laughs> I'm gonna do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever floats your boat is totally fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope I didn't scare you too much. <laughs> hope you painted yourself a really fun, you know, spooky kind of painting. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.